And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. On today's program, we are going to make chicken paprika, and it's a Hungarian uh, food product it, 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 because of the paprika. Paprika does stem from Hungary, and it's absolutely delicious, and you can make this many, many different ways in many, many different styles. The way that I cook it is uh, over a pasta type uh, product, whatever you like. Today we're going to use farfalle or the pretty little bow tie pasta, but you could use spinach fettuccine, you could use spaghetti, you could use macaroni, you could use whatever type pasta that you wanted. Now I've already got a pot of water on my stove coming up to a boil and I have preheated my oven to 375 degrees because we are also going to make breadsticks with parmesan and black pepper and they are so very good and it's just great to sop up all the juices that come out of the chicken and in the gravy type thing that we're going to make. I have on my cutting board here, remember we always want to use a separate cutting board. Anytime you're handling meat of any kind, use a separate meat board so that you don't cross contaminate. My wooden board I use for chopping vegetables and onions and garlic and that kind of thing. But So I do have another little board on top of that. I have thin cut boneless skinless chicken breasts. You could use chicken tenders, you could use just the thicker boneless skinless chicken breasts. You can use whatever kind of chicken that you have on hand. What I want to do first is just season this one side with salt and a little bit of fresh ground pepper. And I've got my skillet preheating. It's kind of on a medium, medium to medium high heat. Season the one side first. Take your skillet and put a little bit of olive oil. I would say around two teaspoons or so of olive oil, extra virgin. And then just take your chicken breasts. Mine are the real thin cut chicken breasts and just put them in the skillet seasoned side down and that'll give you an opportunity to season up the other side. My skillet I don't think is going to hold all my chicken. We'll make it fit, won't we? And you're just kind of wanting to brown this chicken up just a little bit. Uh, I got the thin cut because it's quicker and it's easier to cook with. It cooks up so fast. They're uh, you can find these now in any grocery store, but you could, of course, use the, the, the full uh, size chicken breasts if that's what you want to do. And so while the chicken is browning on that one side, go ahead and season up your other side of your meat with a little bit of salt and pepper. At this point, that's all we're going to use is just a little bit of salt and freshly ground black pepper. If you have not gotten yourself a pepper meal, I do want to encourage you to do that. You can get them anywhere nowadays. Some grocery stores even have a little section where you can get kitchen utensils and kitchen tools in there. And if you've never tried freshly ground pepper, there is a world of difference in the flavor in fresh ground and in the pre-ground stuff. While that is browning, we're going to chop up a couple of vegetables. Now, I just happen to have a half of a red pepper left over from another dish, and I'm going to use that in this dish. So if you don't have a red pepper, don't worry about it. It's just going to add some extra flavor and a little bit of extra crunch. And I'm just going to slice it thin. I love red pepper. They're a ripened green pepper. If you didn't know that, they're not a different variety of, of peppers. It's just the green peppers are left on the vine to actually finish ripening. I've just cut them in little strips and I'm going to go ahead and just cut them in half. Work on a big board and then you can just kind of put your, 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 when you chop something, just push it off to the side. I'm going to do an onion. We're just going to chop an onion. We're going to slice it kind of, you know, in little half moon type shapes. And it's trying to get away from me here. And we're just going to 
cut up. Um, I'll see how much this looks like when you get it chopped. You might need to. This was a, a you know, a medium to small size onion, so you want to have some onion. You want to have some flavor. The main flavoring from this dish comes, of course, from the spices that we are going to add. I'm just going to slice this thin, and I honestly, I think this one will be enough. I don't think I'm going to need to do another onion because you just want to have just a little bit of, of sliced onion. I love cooked onions. I don't care for them raw, but I do, I absolutely love cooked onions. They just develop this sweetness that when you saute them or you cook them, they become a sweeter product. Now my chicken is ready to turn. You just want to get just a little bit of a little tiny bit of a golden color on there. You're not aiming to caramelize it too much or anything. You're just really sauteing it off. Now while that other side is cooking, my pasta water is coming up to a boil. And if I'll find my salt, there it is. And I use kosher salt. Now if you'll notice, you'll always see me have a bowl with salt in it. I use kosher salt and it's just a thicker grain salt. And it won't come out of a salt shaker. So just get you a bowl that has a lid on it and just use some good kosher salt. Just salt your water when it comes up to a boil. Go ahead and salt it rather liberally. That really is the only opportunity that you have to flavor the pasta is while it's cooking. And then I just have in, the, in any grocery store out there where you buy the macaroni and spaghetti, they have these cute little bow tie shaped pastas. And that is what I'm going to use today. And it's just a little, it looks like a little tiny little bow tie. It's called farfalle, but it's just a little bow tie pasta. So I'm going to drop that in my water. And I'm going to let that come up to a boil. I've just got a wooden spatula here and I'm just going to kind of bring that up to a boil and put the lid back on until it comes to a boil and then I'll take the lid off. My chicken is browning up. Now we are going to fresh garlic. I mean who doesn't love garlic? We're going to use probably about two cloves. When I get in here and I see how big they are then I'll determine. And This particular one is the, the head of garlic is just tight and it doesn't want to come apart. So we're going to use Oh, probably two cloves for this amount of chicken, a fresh garlic. You can use the pre-chopped garlic that you get in the vegetable section of your grocery store, or you can buy, you know, a head of garlic and chop it yourself, whatever you would like to do. They do sell it in the jars, and it's already real finely minced, and it's good. They pack it in, I'm not sure if they pack it in like a water or an oil type product. But I just, I love garlic, absolutely love it. And you know, it's very healthy for you. Garlic is one of the healthiest things in the world for you to eat. Now, if you, if you slice it, if you just hit it with the side of your knife, it just gets all those skins off, and then slice it, and then take your knife, just like I'm doing, and run across it, just like that. and just kind of push it back together. And just take your knife and do that and that just minces it up because you really do want it finely minced for this particular recipe. You want your garlic to be minced up pretty fine. And that looks good. Let's check on our chicken real quick and see where we are. And the chicken is looking good. So I'm going to take the chicken. We're going to go to a quick break. All I'm going to do is take the chicken out of the skillet and onto a plate and we're going to put it back in in just a few moments but I'll be back with you in just a minute. Hey and welcome back. Now all I did was take the chicken out of the skillet and we're just going to let that go to the side. Now it's not fully cooked at this point but we're going to add it back into the sauce in just a minute. I'm going to take just a little bit more of the olive oil and I'm going to put it in the skillet. I'd say that was around, I don't know, a tablespoon or so. I'm going to look at my pasta there. And we're going to saute these wonderful vegetables. I think I'm going to turn my skillet down just a little bit. I added a half of a red pepper and then an onion that I have just sliced up. And I'm going to stir that around. We're just going to saute these vegetables until they are just softened just a little bit. 
I love red bell pepper. Like I said, it, it's just really is truly just a ripened green pepper. And one year I had a garden. Uh, it's been about six years or so ago. I had a, a nice big garden. And I love to garden. I love to grow things and, and all of that. But I had a chocolate brown bell pepper. I grew brown bell peppers. And they were so sweet and so delicious. And uh, I had just never seen it. I saw the plant at the store and I thought, well, I have to try that. And so we're going to stir up, saute up the onions and the red bell pepper. I'm going to add... Remember we chopped two cloves of garlic and we're going to just add that in to our onions and our pepper and just stir that around. We want to season it up. It's very important when you're cooking that you season as you go. Add a little bit. Don't overwhelm it at any one stage or the other. Add a little bit of salt and pepper, you know, as you go. I'm just going to add just, just a little tiny bit of salt and some freshly ground pepper to our onions and our pepper. And I have to show you this little thing. Now, I have heard all my life, as far back as I can remember, the term in cooking, add a pinch of this or a dash of this or a smidgen of this. Well, I had gone with my sister to uh, Boone, North Carolina shopping before Christmas. And we went in this store, and they had the neatest little thing. And if she'll get me a close-up shot, I'll show you what I'm talking about. These little measuring spoons. And as you can see, there's your smidgen, there's your pinch, and there's your dash. And it's, as you can see, it's little itty-bitty tiny little measuring spoons that say smidgen, pinch, and dash. I just fell in love with it. I thought it was the cutest thing, and I had to have one because I've heard that all my life, and nobody's ever able to measure what those things are, but now you can, and so I just love these. I thought they were so cute, and I had to show them to you. But our vegetables are coming along. I really want the peppers to stay on the crisp side, the onions to soften a little bit. So let's add our spices. Now, Remember I said a key point of this is the paprika. I want you to add one bay leaf, and I'm going to break mine in half. Remember, you always do remove, anytime you use a bay leaf, you remove that at the end. Then I have some uh, red pepper flakes, because again, I like things to be a little spicy. And I'm going to use my little cute little dash, and we're going to do a dash, maybe two dashes. Let's do two dashes of the red pepper flakes. Then I'm going to add a little bit of rosemary. I've got about a teaspoon of rosemary that I have crushed. That's dried rosemary. You most certainly could use fresh if you, if you have fresh rosemary. And then paprika. Now paprika can come in hot. It can come in smoked. It can come in sweet. This happens to be sweet paprika. You could use the hot paprika if you wanted it or the smoked paprika. I love the hot paprika, but I couldn't find it today. So this is the sweet paprika, and I've got about two tablespoons of the paprika. And just add that in. And then I have some cayenne, dried cayenne pepper. And I'm going to add a smidgen of the cayenne pepper. It's very, very, very hot. So add sparingly. You just add what you like. And then we're just going to stir those around. My pasta has come up to a boil. So you want to take the lid off. Remember to never leave your lid on while your pasta is cooking or it will boil over. We are going to add one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. This is a new product on the market. It's Wonderful. It's delicious. That roasting of the tomatoes just brings out that natural sweetness. If you can't find the fire roasted tomatoes, just use the, the regular diced tomatoes. But if you can, please look for the fire roasted. You see that little, that, those little flecks in there that they've just roasted those tomatoes and they're so good and so yummy. And I'm going to add one small can, an eight ounce can of tomato sauce. And we are going to just add that. Now, at this point, I'm going to add my chicken back in to the, if I can find mine, there they are, 
my uh, tongs, I'm gonna add the chicken back into the sauce. And any of the juices that came out of the chicken on your plate, be sure you just pour those right back in there. And we're just gonna let that simmer for a few minutes. And now we're gonna go to a quick break and when I come back, we are going to make Parmesan and black pepper breadsticks. They're easy and delicious. We'll be right back in just a minute. Hey, and welcome back. And we are going to make some Parmesan and black pepper breadsticks. Now, what I have is I've got our chicken. It's just simmering away over here. It's smelling so good. We're gonna add a little bit of lemon to that in just a little bit. But I have a block of, of fresh Parmesan cheese, and we're just gonna grate that over a plate. You could use um, the pre-ground Parmesan cheese if you want it. I, I just really like the flavor of the fresh better. I, I just personally think it tastes better, but by all means, you use what you like. You could use the pre-shredded up. You can buy now in the grocery stores. You can get the tubs of the fresh Parmesan cheese and, and, and it's already grated or it is shredded or it is in the, uh, in the flakes. And that is really good over a salad. You could most certainly you know, just put that over a salad. And I want to save some of this cheese because we're going to grate some over the very end of the dish. And it's just simmering away over there and it looks really, really good. And it smells really, really good. So we're just going to put our grater right there. And we've got just a little neat little pile of cheese. And we're going to add a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of freshly ground pepper. And you know, in your grocery store, in the dairy section where you buy the canned biscuits, uh, usually they're right beside the eggs and you know where I'm talking about in your grocery store, you can get the little containers like the biscuits come in of breadsticks. They usually come, they, they'll come in a package and they just roll just like this. Now just kind of take your fingers and toss that and just sort of, you know, mix that together. You get the breadsticks in the tube and just take those out. You want, do want to line your baking sheet with some kind of, of paper. I'm using parchment paper today. Take a breadstick and just coat, coat it with a little bit of the cheese, twist it, and put it on your baking sheet here. And we are gonna make us some wonderful, wonderful breadsticks. The, you could add, if you wanted to, I've got garlic in the chicken, and so I didn't really kinda wanna overdo the garlic. You just take your breadstick and just roll it in your cheese. I didn't wanna overdo the garlic, so I didn't add any garlic, but you could add some garlic powder that you can get in the, in the spice section of your store. You could, by all means, Add that. Now, do you see why I wanted to line the sheet? You see how that cheese just gets, well, that's going to melt. And if you line your baking sheet in your oven, it's less mess to clean up. All you have to do is just throw away the parchment paper that you've got your chicken or your breadsticks on. I'm thinking chicken over there. That's just bubbling away. It smells so good. It's got garlic and onions and uh, a little bit of t fire roasted tomatoes. It's worth it to, to find those fire roasted tomatoes. Now they're, they're fairly new on the market, but I have found them in every grocery store that locally here where we are in Abingdon, I have had no problems finding it. And that's something on this program that you, you, I will do. I will make sure that the ingredients that I use to cook with are things that you can find no matter where you go. And isn't it wonderful that the grocery stores now have really come a long way in, in their, in their um, carrying of what once was considered to be exotic ingredients. Now, you really can find them just in any grocery store. The, everyone out there has a section that is the, exo or the uh, you know, international cuisines. You can get really good balsamic vinegars and 
like these fire roasted tomatoes and really good olive oils and you know, most of the grocery stores now are getting those olive bars where you can get the, you know, the different kinds of olives and things like that. We're going to take these. We just, all we did, remember, was just twist a, a little bit or grate a little bit of Parmesan cheese and added some freshly ground black pepper. We've got our oven preheated to 375. These are going to take just a couple minutes, so let's get them in there and just let those bake away. And let's check on our chicken. And we've got cheese everywhere, but that's okay. We love cheese around here. Take a lemon. Remember, any time that you're going to juice a lemon, roll it under your hand on your cutting board. And what that does is that just releases the juices from the chicken, or from the chicken, from the lemon. And it just, it just allows it to, to come out more, the juices to come out. Let's check on our chicken. Our pasta is done. So let's turn that off. Oh, can you see this, how yummy that that looks. And I'll tell you, now myself, I think a little bit of lemon juice, fresh lemon juice, added to just about anything, brightens the flavor. This is a lemon reamer. If you've never seen one of these, you can get them anywhere. And it just really helps you to juice the chicken. Just, just the little sharp point, just put in the, in the lemon. It helps you juice the lemon and just twist it. And you see all the juice that's coming out of that lemon and just brightens up the flavor of your chicken. And um, it just brings out the natural sweetnesses in there. And it just looks so yummy. Now remember, I used the thin, thin cut uh, chicken breasts, the boneless, skinless chicken breasts. They, they're wonderful. You can get them in the grocery stores now, and they're great for dishes like this. They're great for chicken cordon bleus or you know chicken scallopini. You can even get turkey cutlets now that are just yummy and they're so easy and quick cooking. Many times when you get home from work and you've been working all day long and you get home, you're tired, you don't want to spend an hour in the kitchen cooking. So what these things are, these products are great for just a quick cooking meal. You can feed your family or yourself. You can feed them with good wholesome food that, that you can prepare in your home. Remember we've got our pasta. It has drained and it looks so or, or cooked. And I love these pasta pots, the, the little pasta inserts that you can get now in, in the cooking departments. And it just allows you to drain your pasta. And uh, that way you can get it drained. And let me get, well, let's just leave it here till we're ready to plate up. We'll, we can drain it. That's the beauty about that. You can just lift it up and put it back down. But in the meantime, let's get our chicken together. We've got a pretty plate here. And let's see how this dish comes together. Let's take our lemon, before we do that, let's just take our lemon and just cut off a slice of it. And just cut that in half. And let's take our parsley and let's chop our parsley. Just a little bit, you want about a tablespoon or so of fresh parsley. I love parsley. The flat leaf, the Italian parsley, or the curly parsley, whichever you would like. And just dice it again, just like we did our garlic. Just take your knife and run through the parsley. And it just adds a, a fresh flavor to the food. Okay, and at this stage, we want to remove the chicken from the dish for just a moment. You want to add some heavy cream, about a fourth of a cup or so. It just adds so much flavor and richness to your sauce. Add in just a little tiny bit of your freshly chopped garlic. Our breadsticks are done, so let's get it plated up real quick. We have got our pasta. Just use that spoon. You want to get a little bit of your pasta, whatever kind you wanted to use. Add a little spoon of your sauce over that. Yum. And add one of your chicken breasts over top of that. 
and then sprinkle it with just a tiny bit of parsley and a tiny bit of freshly ground Parmesan cheese. Put a couple of your yummy breadsticks on your plate. They're hot and they're sticking to each other here. Let's get one. And there you go. There's chip chicken paprika with your Parmesan and black pepper breadsticks. Enjoy. If you enjoyed this episode of Everyday Nana and would like a copy of today's recipes, please write Living Faith Television, CO Everyday Mana, PO Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212, or visit our website at www.livingfaithtv.com. Please be sure to include the program number found on the bottom of the screen in your letter so we will know which recipes you would like. Thanks for watching and join us again for the next episode of Everyday Mana.